Building things in video games is like anything else. The more you do it, the better you get. It doesn't matter if you're playing Valheim, Minecraft, Conan Exiles, or any other game with building. With that being said though, there are definitely some things that might help you get better faster. So after countless build videos made, I'm finally going to share a bit about my process of using concepts from real world architecture for inspiration. For example, the old Frost Cave Fortress build where I was inspired by Asian style temple roofs or the old mountaintop castle build, which I designed after learning about multiple lines of defense in castles. Speaking of, the topic of this video is going to be medieval castles, because they're iconic and easy to find information on. So with that in mind, we've got a great topic chosen, I've got some basic ideas in my head, and as usual, I've done some research for inspiration. Let's get started. So first things first, I choose my build site. I'm looking for a large hill to work on and a spot right on the water. After some searching, I found the spot. Next, I set up a very basic plan for the build on the hill. Remember before when I mentioned multiple lines of defense? This time I've added in spots for two different gatehouses. The first will be the main entrance, and the second you will have to be completely surrounded by walls to get through. Pretty cool. Next, it was time to plan out the main keep at the top of the hill. Now, I'll be honest, only later on did I fully complete the plan for the main keep. I mean, it is by far the hardest part of the castle to design, and I had already spent an entire day researching, finding the location, and planning the rest of the build, so at this point, I was ready to call it a day and just get straight to building on day two. Now, the next thing I did might sound weird. I packed up my stuff, left the build site, and I found a new area to work. This gave me a nice flat area where I could work on individual parts of the build that I can copy in as I go. And the first of these individual parts were my two gatehouses. I had a lower gatehouse which could have a smaller tower on the left and larger on the right, and I also had an upper gatehouse which would have two identical towers which I decided to build first. I started off by choosing the shape for the towers. Then I started the building with multiple types of stone and eventually a wider base to support the weight up above. After that, I added a thinner section and then created a top for the tower that goes back out again using some medieval castle tricks, which I'll define in a moment. I then finished it all off by designing a roof. And then I even decided to add a simpler version of those cool Asian temple inspired spikes that I used in the past. Now the first tower was complete, time to turn it into the upper gatehouse. To do that, I copy pasted over the tower and filled in the space in between with a simple wall. Then I built two different elements of the wall to finish it up. First, the curved gate, which is quite simple. And second, the covered walkway, which was built to match the roof of the towers. Okay, so I'm no castle expert, but let me show you how using concepts from real world architecture has already helped me design almost everything. First, you have a gatehouse. Second, you also have a plinth on the bottom of the wall. Third, you have corbels on the top of the wall. Then fourth, you have machicolations next to the corbels. And fifth, you have battlements. And technically this is a roofed battlement. You also have though the pointed medieval arch as opposed to the Roman curved arch, and I added a simple iron gate to make this seem like a portcullis, which is basically just a vertically closing gate. Not to be confused with a drawbridge, which I'm thinking now probably would have been way cooler, but maybe next time. Now the upper gatehouse is complete. Time to adapt the medium sized tower into a smaller and larger version. This didn't take long because I already had the general theme decided. The only difference was the arrow slit windows that I added into the middle areas. After that, I completed my lower gatehouse by combining the two new towers with the same wall from the upper gatehouse. Now, time to put my two gatehouses into place. Fun fact, arrow slit windows angle outwards so that you can see more when shooting out, but doesn't allow you to see more when shooting in. More inspiration. All right, after some work, I fit in the new gatehouses. This is when it really hit me how huge this project was going to be. To be honest, 
I was even slightly discouraged knowing how much work was left, and considering I hadn't even made the plan for the castle keep yet, I walked around the castle for a bit, most likely just stalling, but it seems like that was exactly what I needed because as I walked through the first gate and rounded the corner, my brain suddenly threw me an idea. I had this big open area here where I wanted to put a wall up against the ocean, and I suddenly remembered reading about something called bastions, which by definition are just towers that are the same height as the wall that connects them, as opposed to regular towers which stick up over the wall. More importantly though, this idea would be the motivation I needed to get back to work. Alright, so I immediately got to work bricklaying my bricks across the slightly curving outer wall. And then I added three evenly spaced bastions. And of course, after that, I added a design for the castle wall. And then a design for a roof, which I just mentioned bastions, but other than that, you once again have plinths and corbels coming out from the wall. You also have machicolations again for shooting down, and now crenellations for protecting people while shooting. But this time, you have a roofed curtain wall instead of a roofed gatehouse, which has a cool, unique shape. Now, to complete the entryway of the castle, I need to fill in the wall in the back. So, I went over to the test area and grabbed the top of the wall. I then connected it to the lower gatehouse and ran it around the entryway. I then filled in a basic wall first, and then went back through and added some cool supports for realism. Now this is when the castle vibes really started hitting me. You can even see how I've used a few different pieces here to create a textured floor design that, as far as I know, has never been seen before in Valheim. Later on, you'll see how I used this on the interiors, and I also did something special with it, but more on that in a minute. I also don't think I mentioned yet how I occasionally use large rocks to feel like the castle was built directly onto existing terrain. Okay, so the entry is complete. Now I have to work on the plan for the main keep. At this point, I was about five full days into working on this project, so I had been putting this off for almost a week. But there was no more time to stall. It was time to get out my hammer and get to work on some serious castle planning. Alright, so this is what I'm thinking. The castle will be separated into two main keeps with a courtyard in the middle. I'll be calling these two keeps the main keep and the tower keep. In the back, I've decided that the tallest thing in the whole build will be a long wall connecting the two main keeps with a tower built into each corner, which because this wall is so high up, looks insanely cool from inside the courtyard, by the way. Finally, there are also some possible bridges going over the courtyard and a kitchen coming off the side of the main keep, but that's it for the plan. Back to work. So once again, I'm no historian, but my real world inspiration here came from the castle keep the Great Hall, and also the Castle Courtyard, which is also known as the Bailey. Next, I started working on the main keep. I started off first on the outer wall by building supports on the very bottom using the same mix of materials used so far. I then filled in the wall one floor at a time. The first and tallest floor got arrow slit windows with nice stone designs on top and bottom. For the second floor, I took a quick trip to the test area where I separated the arch used in the gatehouses, thus growing my list of usable pieces in the test area and also bringing in a common theme. I also added arrow slit windows here to finish off the second floor wall. For the third floor, I created a somewhat new piece by using my pointed arch once again, but this time sticking it out slightly from the wall. Then I created some nice supporting stone pieces underneath that matched the supporting stone pieces on the bastion wall. Then I added a second layer of pointed arch in a different type of stone. In fact, I loved this whole thing so much that I made a copy of it and brought it over to the test area for further use later on. I finished up the outer wall by bringing out the sides to make them seem like they help with support and by adding a cobblestone trim over the plain stone details. Fun fact, typically in castles you wouldn't see any opening larger than arrow slits unless it's a fortified gateway, but occasionally you might find something at the very top out of reach of any intruders. Once I completed the front wall of the main keep, I worked on the roof. 
The roof was pretty simple at first, just meeting up in the middle with two different angles. But you can see it got more complicated when I also included something from my castle inspiration, which is called a parapet. A, a, a para... A, a parapet. I, I, and this one is a covered parapet with the roof modified to cover the feature. After the roof, I got to work on the remaining visible walls of the main keep that face into the courtyard. You can see that I've brought around the single pointed arch and small arrow slit windows, keeping the theme exactly the same. And I'll try to keep a similar theme on the corner and on the top of the build also with three more double arched entryways. I also roofed the kitchen on the side of the building and added a chimney. After that, I created a crenellated walkway, which started on top of this section of the building that sticks out, goes past and over the front door, and past the kitchen towards the back wall where it would end for now. I also then supported this walkway with another single archway. Alright, so the main keep is done. Time for the tower keep. First, you can see I modified the original shape of the tower to a square. I then started off by adding in the pointed arch below and the double pointed arch above on each side, with each of them also sticking out from the core tower shape. I then connected the four identical sides with simple stone bricks. These were too plain though, so I decided to alternate between different types of stone so that the details would stand out more. Then for the top of the tower, I decided that it just needed a roof that fit the shape of the tower exactly, with only the roof sections over the double pointed arches sticking up to allow me room to place the scary skull trophy that I've been using throughout the build already. At that point, the basic shape was done, so I added in some nice wooden details. After that, I threw in some elements that match the rest of the build, some stone and also some large core wood pillars that I used previously to support the tops of the towers. Now at this point, I really liked the roof, but I could tell it needed more, so after some brainstorming, I isolated the top of the roof, lifted it up, and created a new section supported by thick stone pillars. This felt really cool to me, and also gave me another excuse to bring in the pointed medieval arch. Now the only problem was the platform below. It was not great. I had come back to it multiple times while designing this building, but stopped each time. I was stumped, so time to get to work experimenting. In the end, I decided to slim down the platform near the build, because I felt like it just needed to get bigger at the bottom to feel real. And then this is where I had an idea to use the same couple of pieces I used earlier to make a detailed floor. This time though, I would use them to create a natural feeling gradient coming down the side of the platform darker pieces on the bottom to the lightest pieces at the top, hopefully giving it an aged and weather-torn stone structure kind of look. Once again, never seen this before in Valheim, so you'll have to let me know in the comments what you think. Alright, so for the final pieces of the build, I had three main things left to do. First, I needed the final walls and towers to connect the back tallest part of the build, which would also finally close in the courtyard. The first thing I did is finish raising the ground up as far as it would go. Next, I brought in the wall segments from the test area and lined them up with the pre-existing wall plan. After that, I brought in two of the middle sized tower to go on the corners of the back wall. I then designed a new feature for the middle of these tall walls, once again using the pointed arch. I also decided to bring the back wall over the main keep on the left side to add more protection. With this in mind, and with the fact that I couldn't raise the ground anymore here, I also added a large rock to make this side seem more imposing. The second thing I needed to figure out was how I was going to fit some bridges into the courtyard. So I got one more use out of those pointed arches when I designed a quick double arched bridge to support the walkway. I then connected everything up in the courtyard for the first time. Pretty cool. And with this bridge, I got some really nice corbels, machicolations, and crenellations to fit that medieval castle theme. And the third and final thing I needed to do to finish the build was the interiors of everything. And I'll tell you, the interiors are some of the best I've ever done. Alright, let's take a tour. 
Starting at the front, you have the Ocean Entrance. As you round the corner, you can go into the tower on the left, which crosses over the front gate into the largest tower. Continuing on the ground, there is the entrance into the Bastion Wall area, with three bastions and also other miscellaneous castle wall items. Then you go through a very tall gate leading into the courtyard. There is a small blacksmith under the bridge in the back. Then moving inside, you enter the Great Hall, which is fitted with super cool arched ceilings. There is also a kitchen with food storage and a fire and ovens, a hearth in the main dining room to keep everyone warm. Then heading up the tower in the back, you can go across to the other tower or you can go up to access the crenellated courtyard walls. Then if you take the stairs, you enter the throne room. I've also staged this as the quarters for the king and queen. Then you can follow the courtyard wall around to the army barracks. First, you have the bottom floor with a central hearth for cooking and warmth, and also beds for the guards. Then, on the second floor, you have a room with multiple elevations, allowing access to the outer doorways for looking out for intruders. On the third floor, I have the portals for channel members to navigate the world. Then back down onto the second floor, you have access to the back wall where you can travel up the towers to the tops, across the walls, and also down the far tower into the top floor of the main keep. The final room is left open for my channel members. You could build a small house or maybe even a treasure room for the end of a quest. But that's it, thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch another one of my videos, here's one here. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.